and gather all your ideas and meet a mood board. You have a world setting ready to be populated. And most importantly, you have lore. And it's cringe, just the way we all love it. How do you turn this collection of ideas into a visual representation that you, and more importantly, others can see on paper? So let's go over some of the rules and processes I follow for character design. Let's start off with the basics. Keep all the notes and references throughout the whole process. This includes resources that you are putting under a maybe, or you have changed your mind on during the process or something else, and having everything at hand makes going back over material that may have been passed over or put aside a much smoother process. Now you might say, but well, I passed over this before, why would I need this again? Well, if there's one thing for sure about how our minds work is that we're very good at going back on something we have decided on. And when we suddenly decide that the thing we looked at a few days ago will be a better fit, having it stored away and easily accessible makes the whole work process a lot less stressful than combing the great reaches of wherever you last think you skimmed over it. And the rule to follow on from keeping all your resources and materials, keep everything organized. Whether you are working just text or you have a list of links back to resources where mood boards filled with layers of different images, make sure to have some kind of organization that makes filtering through it easier. So naturally, how you do this is A, depending on the number of materials you get it that may or may not warrant some more thorough amount of organization, and more importantly, B, how you best find organizing and digging through your own collection of resources work. How everyone does this is different, so I'm not going to tell you how to do it, but I will say you should do it. Now that we have talked about managing your resources, let's talk about something that sounds basic, but it's probably where most people actually get stuck. I'm talking about how to start, moving from a blank to a complete state. It might sound ridiculous, but a common thing you hear is not knowing how to start. To this I say, just start doing something that vaguely resembles progress. If you're writing out the detailed summary of a character, just start writing anything that comes through your mind. If you're drawing out a character design sheet, start sketching out something vague that resembles what you think the character might look like. It is realistic to expect that whatever you're putting down at this point is not going to be the final version. As we've already noted earlier, we are very good at going back on and changing things. Or at least, it is much easier to adjust something with visual form over several iterations than starting from a blank state. Being able to think over whether what you are looking at is good or bad, and also being able to compare each iteration against one another allows you to progress simply by deciding, yes, this is what I wanted. Similar to how you should follow through all your reference materials, being able to go back over all the ideas you have had over the whole process will be useful in forming a final product. But now that we are managing our resources, let's talk about actually turning those into a character. One thing I think that helps and isn't talked about much is having an idea about what you actually plan to use your character for and what role they need to perform. Typically speaking, an important character that needs to be remembered as standout within a crowd tends to have more details that set them apart from the crowd. The character that needs to be reused as a template for a type of background mob should probably contain just enough detail to determine their general traits. Also, having a setting in mind I find generally helps. It doesn't need to be fully detailed lore, but just having a general setting will affect details on a character you might not normally think too hard about, particularly you want a more realistic tone. The example I've always come back to for this was about heels, specifically high heels. For those who have worn high heels, or been around others who have worn them, you know that they aren't exactly the most comfortable or practical footwear around. I did do some research to see if there was a better explanation for the heels, but all of it basically came down to supposed visual attractiveness. What this all ends up meaning is that if you want a character in a highly realistic setting where everything needs to make sense in relation to real life, and your character needs to move more intensely than walking, you should probably look somewhere else in the design for sex appeal. On the other hand, if your character is really living out a fantasy that ignores all the factors of the real world, have your character do acrobatics, then the high heels, or the uneven terrain of a dense forest. If it's your dream, go for it. And now that we are thinking about real life examples, let's go over the rules I follow when looking at resources. So here are the basic rules I follow for this. First off, with the obvious, don't flat out copy a creative IP belonging to someone else. Along that note, existing brands are also out. And this is a purposeful parody, but that's not what we're here for today. Next. For design aspects or concepts, this unfortunately is a bit of a gray area where the best answer I can give you is, well, it depends. Frankly, most things used in the design, or how something was applied to a design, have probably been done not just a few times, but many multiple times over by many different people. It's a bit of a grey area, but I do go with taking only one part of the design that I liked, and then, if I feel the need to be generally safer, applying it to a different part of my design. Overused concepts, however, I think are generally safe. These are the fancy parts of the design that everyone seems to like using a lot. And it's been done so much, it's pretty hard for anyone to really say anything against it. The most common one I see is using the inside side of clothing to display a night sky or galaxy. Quality of execution may vary, but I've seen it enough times over different media to say, yeah, that's probably safe to use without thinking too hard about it. All that said, when you do start saving material, putting it somewhere where you can mark them with notes and comments will save time in the long run. 
I'd say this is particularly important if you're gathering a lot of material from anything that catches your eye, because you're not at all likely to remember why you pulled some of it later. Circling parts of the material and maybe writing caption notes is a good way to remember what went through your head at the time of picking out the material. And that is it for the general rules and processes I follow when I work on designing a character. If you found this video useful, subscribe and leave a like, it helps me know what I'm making is useful. Also, if you have things you'd like to do when designing characters or you have some topic idea that you'd like me to cover, leave a comment below the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.